welcome to another episode. Now today's topic is idioms. I know that some of you have already heard about this. Some of you might be hearing this word for the first time. It's okay. You just have to go back to the dictionary, find out what is an idiom. It is a usage in the English language. It is okay if you don't know what an idiom is and if you're not a frequent user of an idiom. That is fine. But sometimes you come across people using idioms in their language to add some energy to give the flow and to make it more vibrant. Now, this particular idiom, go for a toss. I will not say that it's very bad to learn idiom or you should fill your conversation with a lot of idioms. You could go medium on that. Now, this particular idiom, go for a toss, has got different meanings when it comes to the context. Whenever you learn a particular idiom, keep in mind that you need to learn it from the context. Sometimes when you refer the Google or when you refer books, you get just one or two meanings. And some of the idioms you should keep in mind that they have got multiple meanings uh, when it comes to a different context. So it is always advisable to go for little research. There's nothing wrong. Like when you learn the meaning of a particular word also, it's always good to refer and find out little more about the word. You will not be able to keep everything in your mind and that is perfectly okay. Now coming to go for a toss, I'll just give you some of the situations where you use this particular idiom. Uh, and it's okay if you're not able to understand and all the meanings and every context that is given here, but still try it out. Okay, the first one. The first situation, I'm going to give an example. Now here, Suppose you are having a friendly argument uh, with your uh, friend, a very close friend, and your friend says, I would like to go to the theme park. And you say, no, I want to go for a movie. So theme park or a theater is the uh, conflict of interest or where you are finding it very difficult to take a decision. So there you say, let's go for a toss or let's take a toss. Yeah, so that is when the decision uh, making process is quite difficult. You don't want to hurt the feeling of your friend. Also, you want to respect the choice and at the same time, you want to do justice to the choice of your friend as well as your choice. So this is the situation. So when you come across a situation where you're not able to take uh, a firm decision, sometimes when you want to go and take a chance also, you, you say, Go for a toss. Now here it is very difficult to take a decision at the same time. You're taking a chance also. So whether the theme park or the movie theater, sometimes the movie will not be as uh, pleasing or it will not reach your expectation also, right? And suppose you go to the theme park also, there are chances that you love it or you don't like it. So it's like you're taking a chance with the choice and with the decision. That is the first uh, instance or context. The second thing is go for a toss is when you want to ignore or when you feel like avoiding something or when you have forgotten something. For example, if I ask you, if I throw a question like this, has uh, the habit of reading gone for a toss in this digital era? So I'm trying to ask you if you have really forgotten this habit of reading in this digital era. So it's like have you forgotten about it? Are you avoiding it? And also, are you taking a chance with the habit of reading? It's not just forgetting it. Of course, it has got a reference to the chance that is being taken. Are you taking a chance? Are you forgetting it? Are you ignoring it? So it's like a warning admonition, a mild admonition, right? So that is the second uh, place where you could use go for a toss. The third one is go for a toss. Again, perfectly, it is only chance. Suppose your friend is not keeping well and you ask your friend, did you meet the doctor? Did you go to the doctor? And your friend says, no, I didn't go. Oh, let me see what's going to happen. And you immediately your response is, why do you have to go for a toss? Why don't you meet the doctor and find out what exactly is wrong with you? So that is like, why do you have to ignore, avoid or even take a chance? So these are the common places where you could use go for a toss. Um, and also you, you see that there is a change in the verb there, gone, going for a toss, go. And sometimes you say, let's take a toss. All these are different usages and it varies from place to place. For the Americans, it is different. For the Britishers, it's different. For Australians, sometimes it is different. I'm not telling everywhere it is like that. 
And because this idiom is not commonly used, I just thought of making a video on this. And um, let me also remind you that you don't have to sit and by heart all these things. You have to take it with the flow and it's always good and nice to write it down uh, on, on in a journal or write it down on a very colorful uh, paper and keep it aside. And whenever you get time, you could just go through it. Just go through it as if you're flipping a magazine. See, when you flip a magazine, you must have noticed that there are so many things that catches, it just catches your attention. But when you sit to study sometimes, this is the case with a few people, you might uh, tell me that it depends on the interest of the person and it depends, it varies from person to person. I totally agree. But still, it, it depends on how you create the interest. The strategy that works with you will be different. Like, you can use a common strategy when it comes to language, but the way you do it for yourself, the way you motivate yourself is also very important. So idioms, you could take a book or you can just use your digital laptop or tab or your mobile phone and open a page uh, where you just write down the notes in different colors. And whenever you get time, effortlessly, you have to go through it. I have a lot of learners uh, coming and telling me that I would like to just work on the language skills and speak English effortlessly. For that, you definitely will have to take a lot of effort. Consistent practice and determined um, approach will only help you to speak English effortlessly. And those days are near, believe me. Okay. So when it comes to idioms, there are a lot of people, I've come across many, who just give they just pressurize themselves and say, you have to learn this idiom or I have to learn these idioms so that I sound very appealing and attractive. It's not like that. Sometimes when you use simple language also, you can be really attractive. The way you present it is very important with confidence. But idioms are really good. It adds color to your conversation. If you can really work on it over a period of time, of course, you will have a lot of color to your language. So happy learning and this is Renee Rose Matthew signing off.